I was, this is no lie, I was sitting down practically near the back of the church, middle to the back. He called me out. He was preaching and he operated in the prophetic, proper prophetic, not some of the prophetic individuals you get these days, proper. He <laughs> called me out and he said, young lady, the Lord is saying that the stage is, no, he said, this is a minister. I want everybody to stretch their hands forward. Remember, I just left my church. Um, and the Lord is saying the stage is set and the resources from heaven are there. Our church, um, one of the signs of an apostolic church and minister is operating in the supernatural. Just being, we've had so many miracles. I mean, people who have been practically dead or near well, death. Yeah, there's been about two. Um, a premature baby who um, literally was dead for two minutes. He's mm -hmm. five now. Mm -hmm. We've had many miracles. I mean, many. Um, and um, we've, you know, because, and we've got quite a few people who are seers, about three. Beryl is mm -hmm. a seer. So they have open visions and, you know, see into the spirit realm. Obviously, I see mainly through dreams, but, mm -hmm. you know, and we, we have the word of knowledge. So that is very strong in the church. Have you found any issues being a female preacher as opposed to being a male preacher? Oh, definitely. Preacher? Because... Mm -hmm. And a black one. Oh, a black one. Oh, gosh, definitely. Because, unfortunately, um, uh, Pauline theology is taken out of context. context. What do I mean? When um, Paul says women should be silent, yes. mm -hmm. that has been taken out of context, yes. the cultural context. Yeah. And so many individuals reading that particular biblical text um, have taken it out of that particular cultural context and the audience that Paul was talking to and the group of women that Paul was writing to. Um, obviously, Paul couldn't have meant that women should be silent because Paul had fellow, he had Cleo, Phoebe, he had fellow yeah. Phoebe, he yeah. had uh, lots of yeah. other women yeah. who were his co-workers, mm -hmm. Priscilla okay. was his co-worker. Welcome, Dr. Carol Tomlin. Thank you for joining Black Economics today. We're going to be asking Dr. Carol Tomlin about her life with regards to ministry. When she first decided to become a minister, she now runs a theology school mm -hmm. and she will tell us uh, about how she started being a minister and why she's doing a theology school now. Wow, where do I begin indeed? Um... My journey to ministry has been a really interesting one. Um, and I say this to everyone, I wasn't intending to be a minister. Um, I knew I was called into ministry, um, but I wasn't intending, as I said, to be a minister. Um, I knew I was called to preach. Um, and I used to imagine myself preaching, um, but more itinerary preaching rather than in-house. Um, it's so interesting how I actually got into ministry. I remember going to a conference and this was the early 1990s and um, it was actually organised by Professor Robert Beckford. And at that conference, it was a theological conference, everyone thought I was in ministry. And when I said I wasn't, you know, I laughed and it, it was genuine ministry. And um, they said, we just assumed, in fact, a couple of people thought I was lying. And I said, no, I'm not in ministry. And they were, they were like, well, why, why are you not in ministry? So I kind of left it. And then I went to another conference in Atlanta, Georgia. I went to do some research. Um, 
at the Interdenominational Theological Centre. This is in Atlanta. And individuals there thought I was a minister. Um, anyway, as life happened, um, I got married. Um, that didn't work out. Um, and I was ill. Ill for about two years with women's issues had surgery with well, that whole period is what i call my waterloo and during that time i felt god was speaking to me um and during that time i knew that i was going to do ministry i didn't know how um i didn't know when um but again i just kept on imagining myself preaching in an itinerary capacity. During this time, I had a couple of words from individuals, and I love this because I love it when people don't know me and give me words. For me, that's authentic. They've never met me before. They've never seen me before, um, and they've given me words, and, and that happened a couple of times. Um, in fact, I went to New York um, once and there was a pastor there and she said, you know, Carol, I think you should become a pastor. I was like a pastor, you know, I'm like, God, even now I think God, I'm not sure that I would have chosen me, but there we go. God is all knowing, etc. Because those of you who know me, you know, it's pure academia. You know, I love academia. I love the research, traveling, etc. So even though I knew I was called into ministry, um, I didn't think that I was going to do that full time. And I, as I said, I felt it was more itinerant. Fast forward. Um, so I was living in America uh, for four years. This was like uh, late 1990s. Came back to the UK, uh, 2000, the year 2000, I came back. When I came back, um, again, I felt the calling become stronger, but, you know, I kind of just thought, well, the Lord will do what only God does. And then I, I was going to a church called the Beacon Church in uh, Birmingham, and they had me preaching a few times. You know, the first time they said, yes, we like your preaching, and they started to invite me to preach quite often. Then I went to another church, and I won't say this church, and for five years I only preached once then. During that time, I started to get frustrated because it was like I was getting literally words from the Lord, sermons, sermon titles. And I said, God, I don't want, you know, I'm not necessarily looking to be a pastor and all I want to do is to preach because you've given me these words. Why am I getting titles of sermons and, you know, who, who am I going to preach it to? So I literally was in bed in depression for one day. And a sister from my church, I mean, now she comes to my church, she called me and she prayed and God spoke to me personally. And he said, I'm going to call you out of the backside of the desert. That was that day. I'm going to call you out from the backside of the desert. So now remember, I wasn't preaching. This was like 2005, 2006. Now I wasn't preaching. I wasn't doing anything. But God told me. So for five years, I hadn't preached or anything. So I left that church. God told me that I was going to leave. Both churches, God told me when to leave. So just before I left the second church, individuals kept on saying you're going to be a pastor you're going to be a pastor you're going to preach and I thought not on my own I need my husband I need somebody with me to help me with this ministry anyway so I was in a bible study one day and I was just having a conversation with God and I said well what do you want me to call the church and he told me restoration fellowship ministries I said okay God so that was that. Um, and then um, Prophetess Tamika Pusey, who um, we ministered together, we started the church together. 
she had she went to Jamaica and she had an open vision of the church being started in her front room. So I said, okay, God, since you're saying that I'm going to become a minister, um, I said, okay, I need mentoring. So I was at my computer and I thought, right, I need a female mentor. I saw this person and I went to her church and she wasn't there. She was in Nigeria. It was a Nigerian minister. I can't remember her name now. But she had an itinerant, no, sorry, she had someone that came to preach in her church during that time. I was, this is no lie, I was sitting down practically near the back of the church, middle to the back. He called me out. He was preaching and he operated in the prophetic, proper prophetic, not some of the prophetic individuals you get these days, proper. He <laughs> called me out. And he said, young lady, the Lord is saying that the stage is... No, he said, this is a minister. I want everybody to stretch their hands forward. Remember, I just left my church. Um, and the Lord is saying, the stage is set and the resources from heaven are there. Wow. That's what he said. So I was like, okay. So... I wanted to go back to that church. Um, at that time, Prophetess Tamika was in another church. And so I thought, oh, I'm not ready to start just yet. So I went to visit the church that she was at, because we were both in the um, second church that I'd left. And um, when I went to the church, Holy Spirit said, get out of this church now. I couldn't settle. I mean, I thought, God, I can't just get up and walk out. So I knew there's no way I could remain in that church. Fast forward, the pastor had a scandal a few months after that, oh, wow. right? So, you know, then um, two weeks after that, we started in her living room um, and the rest is history. But it has been an amazing journey. Um, now I'm, you know, operate within the apostolic. Um, I won't go into the apostolic ministry function and what it means because that's for another discussion. Um, but basically, our church, um, one of the signs of an apostolic church and minister is operating in the supernatural. And there have been, I mean, it's just been, and my sister's here, mm -hmm. phenomenal. And it has been that because I think it's been in the ordinariness so it's not spooky you know like you know um spooky like oh no, 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 no. it's just been we've had so many miracles i mean people who have been practically dead or near You're death yeah there's been about two um a premature baby who um literally was dead for two minutes He's five now. We've had many miracles. I mean, many. Um, and um, we've, you know, because, and we've got quite a few people who are seers, about three. Beryl is a seer. So they have open visions and, you know, see into the spirit realm. Obviously, I see mainly through dreams, but, you know, and we, we have the word of knowledge. So that is very strong in the church, but it's not sensationalized. Um... And, and Lorene's seen me when I've gone to um, your church <laughs> in Leeds. So, but that is what, well, that is just uh, everyday occurrence in our church. Um, and I'm going to end with this. Um, the Lord supernaturally linked me up with Prophet or Dr. Apostle Oscar Gobadaya. He is a proper prophet very quite popular in london so um interestingly the lord supernaturally linked me up with um apostle dr oscar gobadaya who resides well he's the leader of the brook place in east london um and i love recounting this supernatural link um I was on the phone with a friend of mine 
and um, we call him Prophet Oscar. He was um, on messenger with this friend, um, and whose name is Jackie. And um, Jackie had told me about Prophet Oscar before, but I was just it just went over my head. So whilst we were, I was on the phone with Jackie. Um, Jackie did not say to Prophet Oscar that she's on the phone with me. You know how it is when you're messenger, messaging individuals. And so she said, she shouted, she said, um, Pastor Carol, um, Prophet Oscar has picked you up in the spirit. I said, huh? what do you mean? Who's who? She goes, you know, the one that I told you about. Anyway. We then did a group messenger. And I was like, what? I said, you didn't tell him anything about you because I didn't even tell him that you were on the phone. So he then said my greetings to Dr. Carol. And she never calls me Dr. Carol. She always calls me Pastor Carol. So he, and then he said certain questions he was posing, like, is she into academia? So God showed him mm -hmm. that I was an academic. He said, um, what is RFM, which was my ministry, Restoration Fellowship Ministries. And then, you know, just a number of different things. You sure he hadn't Googled he me He had before? never Googled. He had never met me. Remember, he, he'd never met me before. No, when, no, no, he, no, no. He's a genuine when you When he comes to my church, and even online, let's mm. say you are online, he'll call, you out. he'll call you out, even if your name isn't there, mm. he will call you out, right, so this is a genuine article, right, so not only he, he picked up myself, um, Kyra, who's prophetess Tamika's daughter, he picked her up because he said, and then what happens when he's seeing it, he, he, he spelt it out because he couldn't pronounce it, um, it's just amazing. And this is a God's honest truth. Um, he was the, one of the ones, um, that said as well, um, you know, I see an apostolic, um, citadel over your church, etc. And he, he, he only God could have told him certain things. And he said other things that only God could have told him. It's not on Google. That those elements are not scary. on Google. It's well, scary. you know, I had a scary yeah. So it, it's prophetic. Um, um. I mean, you know, his gifting is, um, I suppose it's not just about calling in names, but it's really seeing into the spiritual realm. I'll give you one other example. I was in America at a prayer conference, and um. I went to visit a friend of mine, Dolores, and she was really going through something terrible. And I was telling her about, I said, oh, Prophet Oscar's around and, you know, the conference. And she goes, oh, I'm so sorry. I wish I could have been there because at this time I just need an encouraging word. I was in her house and her house like a mansion. I was there. My phone rang. And I screamed. I said, oh, my God. It's Prophet Oscar. He rarely calls me these days because he's so busy. So he said, um, um, I heard you were in town and I just felt led to call you. And I said, well, you called at the right time because my friend Dolores needs a word from you. And he just prayed and gave her a word. And, you know, she's never, ever forgotten that. I mean, it is remarkable um, and as I said, he doesn't do sensationalism. This is a real, genuine article, right? The real, genuine article. So he's your mentor? Um, he's our accountability partner. Okay. Um, he's one of our trustees, so or the trustee, but he's our accountability partner. So if there are issues that I have that I cannot resolve because that happens, but get this, there's been a couple of issues. I have not needed to tell him. He has messaged me to tell me about what's going on. Wow. Yes. I'm telling you, he has told me what's going on. Wow. Yes. He's very wise as well. Mm. Right? So, um, yep. 
So that's how you know when I've not said anything to anyone, he has told me what's going on. Yeah. Um, and um, so that's that. Um, in terms of the church, since the growth, um, since COVID, it had declined in terms of face-to-face, -face, yeah. which a lot of other people's yeah. churches have. Yeah. But in terms of the yeah. online presence, because we had an online presence before, that has actually increased mm -hmm. um, because we put on now all of our conferences and seminars are online. Um, and we had a really great um, Black History Month online last year. And I've, I'm planning for two this year in October and they're all online. So um, look out on Facebook for Restoration Fellowship Ministries or Carol Tomlin because I tend to post quite a bit okay. on Facebook. Um, in terms of my school, Kingdom School of Theology, that's on Facebook too, but we also have a website. Um, I work very closely with Erickson Mapfumo, Reverend Dr. Erickson Mapfumo, who's currently an Anglican priest as well and an academic. So we, we work to construct this online learning space, primarily for Pentecostal ministers, because oh. we wanted, I felt that there was a huge need mm -hmm. among our ministers to get the theological training. Yeah. Some of them, they were going to mm -hmm. Anglican Methodist training institutions, but they don't meet their needs because some of these institutions, and I, I really don't care who's, listening now poo poo on pentecostals yeah. and pentecostal clergy yeah. yes they do yeah. so mm -hmm. in order to meet that need i've started the school um and um it's going quite well um we've got about five students um currently and um i have a partnership um with um cms oh gosh uh oh, something missions society c i should know what it stands for later. yes I'll cms um uh i've got through harvey through harvey kiwani um so anybody finishing one of my courses can literally have admissions to an ma with really? cms yeah and the cms oh, courses gosh, are validated by Durham University right. okay. yes yes okay. yeah so I work I'm working and developing a partnership with Harvey Kiwani Dr Harvey Kiwani so do they get a certificate once they finish your course yes once I finish my course to get a certificate but because I'm not validated yet because I've only been going literally a year and a half okay. and validation is a process so I'm actually going to start the online validation process. So you have to get accreditation. Yeah, right? but that takes time. I don't know how long that will be because there are so many checks and balances. But yeah. you know, I'm yeah. so and I've got a link with another um institution, uh Northwind Seminary in America. But the one in England, um the CMS is um you know, God just opened up that door. Oh. Um so it's through these encounters that um, the Lord opens mm -hmm. the door. So how long so. does the course take with um, Kingdom Okay, Theology? Kingdom School of Theology, um, it's a year and a half to do a postgraduate certificate. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's all about two or three years to do the postgraduate diploma, certificate level and then diploma. Two, three years? Yes, postgraduate, so part-time. Part part oh, oh, God, yeah, de definitely part-time postgraduate certificate um um one module per semester basically mm -hmm. um so it's about a year 12 to 18 months mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and then um so we've not started the diploma level yet because we're mm -hmm. just seeing yeah the certificate level through you have to have a degree or equivalent really yes because and the reason wow. being yes Many of the ministers in this country from Africa, any part of Africa, particularly West Africa or Zimbabwe, have degrees. Many even have PhDs, but the ministers, many, don't have theology. Mm -hmm. So 
we didn't want to kind of construct a course where people have to do a degree. If you've got degrees or a degree, you've already got the skills to yeah, do. Yeah, you've got the discipline. Yeah, the study. discipline to do yeah. a postgraduate certificate. Mm. So we have created a postgraduate certificate. Mm. And by doing that, we then equip them with the knowledge, the skills, so that when they do the CMS course, which is a master's level course, mm. Yeah. They're equipped with those particular skills and okay, yeah, so the and practical aspects of it. Then. In terms of, um, so they've got the theoretical aspects. Mm. So how do they practice this? Well, okay, because <laughs> the whole course is actually called theological ministry studies. Okay. So we re we relate the content of the course to their practice. The other thing about this course, and I must say this particular thing, it's the only course that I've seen before I constructed the course, which took me six years, I might add. So I looked at all the courses or most of the courses in England and what they offered. Um, and as I said, very few offered anything for Pentecostals. None offered anything in a particular subject. I'm not saying which one because my baby okay. at the moment okay. um so um yes it's and students on the course the 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 um reviews so far from students and have been really good mm -hmm. they're really mm -hmm. i've got and all my tutors i mean they are brilliant they were all ministers they were all theologians mm -hmm. and now they've all got their phds as well Oh, wow. So yeah, all of them, oh. um, and they're all black yeah. men and women. I've okay. got um, uh, there's one uh, white woman who um, I probably co-opt, but they've all got their yeah highly qualified, um, and not just in theology and ministry. Um, they've worked in the field of business. Oh. Um, they're just a um, very talented group of individuals. So we are highly blessed. So when you're teaching ministry, mm -hmm. you teach ministers how to deal on a one-to-one -one basis with the congregation, how to connect so with practical. people, customer service yeah. skills. So. Okay, right. One of the modules which is exploring practical theology right. um, mm -hmm. and its leadership, ministry and care that's the title kst1 yeah. the first module in that particular module for example um there is at the end and even in between case studies uh scenarios okay. so what you'll find with a lot of ministers is that you're faced with real life encounters challenges okay. so for example individuals that for example even of a sexual nature you know um who experience moral failing or individuals who, you know, they might have had a miscarriage, they need some kind yeah. of pastoral care. So we explore those issues. Interestingly, we're having our second public lecture on Friday okay. by a Dr. Shizali. Dr. Shizali is a South African scholar. And she's also a Lutheran minister. Okay. And I met her through her work. Um, there was a particular paper. So they, they, they respond to a lot of peer-reviewed journals. So there was a particular paper that she wrote on self-silencing in okay. domestic violence. The paper was so brilliant. My students just loved that paper. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to invite her to give a talk. So I've invited her for Friday coming. Okay. I can send you the details. Um, so we've spoken. Um, so these are some of the issues that we deal with in the course, like domestic violence, self-silencing within the African context. Um, there was a high profile case in Nigeria a famous singer, oh God. oh yeah, Osanashi, mm -hmm. who was murdered by her yes. husband. Yeah. So again, mm -hmm. uh, you know, from domestic violence. So 
um, the church cannot remain silent. Nope. So what we're aiming to do is to equip ministers. So some of these real issues are some of the issues that we deal with. Um, in our second module, we look at the contextual contextualizing ministry. Who are your congregants? Where are they from? What's their cultural background? How do you minister effectively? How do you communicate the Bible effectively to a whole range of individuals who come from different backgrounds? So these are some of the um, topics, issues that we um, deal with. That's excellent. Mm. Do you have any links with uh, David Muir, who's I have. teaching a, yes. a pastoral course in Wilhelmshaven? Yes. In fact, I have. I mean, obviously, I know David and I was in contact with him, interestingly, a few weeks ago. Um, because of the size of my school, I can't approach the big boys and girls. My own university, Wolverhampton, were very much interested in what I was offering because they said the paperwork was really good but um i've only been going a year yeah. and those in higher education know that that is no time whatsoever even in yeah. fe yeah. that's no time whatsoever yeah. exactly. to put yourself forward for validation so, it doesn't yeah, work like yeah. that but yeah. i hope to be validated fairly soon by the grace of god and some mm. miracle from heaven <laughs> so i'm believing mm. that we will have some kind of accreditation because the school is very thorough and um I have put a lot of work into yeah, yeah the well, structures. Well done with that. Yeah, well done. it's a, been a lot of work. Can I, can but, I ask? Yes. Am I allowed to ask? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in terms of you're saying somebody must have a degree mm -hmm. to get onto the course. So in terms of other people who haven't got those formal qualifications, what's um the entry requirements? Have they got other entry yeah. requirements that they could start a course and then progress? Yeah. Okay, I don't have like an access course. Um, I don't have that type of course. Interestingly, one of my tutors, he's actually developed a certificate course and we're going to meet oh, tomorrow, as a matter of fact, um, to discuss for those who don't have a degree so that they can come onto that course first. If you don't have a degree, but you've studied and your English level, your yes. English written skills, yeah. what lets a lot of people down, even those who do have a degree, a is their writing. Mm -hmm. I cannot stress this enough. And if you come from a different country, to some extent, you've got second language and just wow. the whole stylistic difference. Yeah. So these are That's some of the language. challenges. Yeah. Um, and then even in terms of if you've not studied it, h and d you know h and c or you've not studied you know because if some people don't have a degree but they've studied mm -hmm. and they continually study and they're uh -huh. used to the language and they can write that's different but if you've never studied there's no way you can do my course it's impossible uh -huh. and uh -huh. i'm not taking on anybody um to fail them yeah, i'm not okay. setting up anybody do something else and then come on because you need those skills yeah. um people say well why didn't you have a look uh, course that's perhaps lower you know I wanted to draw on some of the skills I have as an academic to give to the ministers mm, okay. um, that's what I wanted to do okay. somebody else can do yeah. a, a more developmental course yeah and that's fine yeah so it's but you know it's um and you have to be in some kind of ministry because it's practically related yeah. so we deal with ministry praxis as well so okay. Okay. That's it. where did you do your ministerial training? Well, I did my, funnily enough, I did my master's at Birmingham University. Oh, okay. So okay. it was by research, but I, I have a theology master's. People don't know this. I have an MPhil in theology. Oh. So, um, and I had it from the, my my supervisor was Professor Hollingvega, Walter Hollingvega. He is the recognised, if you like, father of Pentecostalism in really? terms of scholarship. Yep. Oh, he was my professor, Walter oh, wow. Holland Vega. Okay. Yeah, people, I did this in the 80s. Um, Levine, is it, yeah. Is it that Enfield? Yes, that that Enfield, so. yes, okay, yes. So you, yeah. I, I yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, um, 
but I did that in the middle of all my other qualifications, funnily enough, are in education. So even that was God ordained because everything that I did was in education. But I, did, I mean, I did RE and history. Um, they were my first degree. But then, you know, in the 80s, I did my master's in theology. And what did you do your doctorate in? Um, education, sociolinguistics. Did you do black proofing stuff? Yes, I did. That. Yes, yeah, yes, that was my yeah. 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 So um, it's been it, it was amazing how God did it. Okay. Yeah. So now I'm a theological educator, and how I got into homiletics, which is my Ooh, research area, yes. I look at quote unquote black preaching, yeah. Pentecostal preaching. Um, was my fascination for preaching. So mm. I've studied that um and i'm a homiletic scholar as well okay, as an okay. educator so who are the big named preachers that you've studied um they're not it's not about names because i obviously my book which is on understanding african caribbean preaching within the pentecostal tradition um i looked at um ministers both great and small mm. and I looked at the different stylistic features the yeah. presentation the communication yeah. the cultural background Pentecostalism and so on and so forth mm. so um and uh, analyzed the preaching so mm. um I also looked at T.D. Jakes obviously and Creflo Dollar um just as mm. by way of reference mm. but my study was based on the British context mm -hmm. within the Caribbean context. I looked at a few Caribbean preachers and those from West Africa, but they were not my main um, study. Um, it was within the British context. Okay. Did you look at Joel? I did. In fact, um, Joel, I think, partly inspired me. Mm -hmm. um, I think in this book, if not this particular one, my last book on uh, black language style, um, his, he did a fantastic extract about marriage. I think it's in this one as well. I just can't remember. But um, so it was a number of people. Um, but it's not individuals per se. It's a collection of individuals and doing an analysis of yes. the preaching yeah. and how they communicate, yeah. which is different mm -hmm. from... A white British. Have you found any issues being a female preacher as opposed to being a male? Oh, definitely. <laughs> because and a black one. Oh, a black <laughs> one. Oh, gosh, definitely. Yeah. Because unfortunately, um, uh, Pauline theology is taken out of contract, context. What do I mean? When um, Paul says women should be silent, yes. mm. that has been taken out of context, yes. the cultural context. Yeah. And so many individuals reading that particular biblical text um, have taken it out of that particular cultural context and the audience that Paul was talking right. to and yeah. the group of women that Paul was writing to. Um, obviously, Paul couldn't have meant that women should be silent because Paul had fellow, he had Cleo, he had yeah. fellow Phoebe, yeah. had a lots of yeah. other women yeah. who were his co-workers. Yeah. Priscilla okay. was yeah. his co-worker. Yeah. He couldn't have yeah. meant women should be silent yeah. because he talked about yeah. if you're prophesying, yeah. Yeah. then, you know, again, culturally at the time, you needed to have your head covered. Yeah.